Hey everyone, Vincenzo Cal of BCAL Productions. Today I'm sitting here with Matthew Lulop, who is the Ottawa City Councillor for Ward 1, Orleans, East Cumberland. Thanks, Matthew, for your time, and thanks for joining me on Let's Discuss Politics. Pretty stoked to be here with you today. Well, it's so great to have you here, and let's get this interview started. So our first segment is called Matthew's Story, where we'll talk a bit about who Matthew is and his political history. So first off, can you tell me a bit about yourself, your story, and how you got your start in politics? Yeah, sure. So um, I joined uh, the Canadian Armed Forces uh, in 2002, uh, and I served with the Ceremonial Guard uh, here in Ottawa. And after uh, about four years uh, of that, uh, I really wanted to, you know, do something different or, or, or try the military out full time. So I joined uh, the regular force uh, in 2006 um, and I ended up uh, serving overseas uh, in Afghanistan with the 2nd Battalion Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry. Um, I was injured while I was overseas. And so at that time, there weren't the same sort of supports that are available now to injured veterans, like to keep them in the forces. And so um, I left the forces, unfortunately, in 2009, and I had to reinvent myself. Now, I didn't particularly like the way um, that uh, the Canadian Armed Forces uh, was being funded by the federal government, and nor did I like the way that veterans were transitioned to civilian life. So I wanted to try and make a difference. And so I went to Carleton University and did a degree in uh, public affairs and policy management. And while I was uh, in school, I volunteered for a member of parliament and then ended up working on Parliament Hill. Um, I helped to develop um, the veterans platform for one of the major political parties during that time, and then ended up working for the Minister of National Defense. Um, I've always really been interested in service. And so, you know, after my service in the military, I was looking for uh, a new way to serve. And when Bob Bennett uh, decided that he was not going to run again for another term here in Orleans, I saw that as an opportunity to step up, uh, take some responsibility, uh, and do some good things uh, in uh, in my neighborhood and uh, the place that I called home, the uh, the place that 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 raised me, and uh, and here I am today working as the as a city councilor for for Orleans East Cumberland. Well, thank you for your service for our country, to our country, first of all, serving in the military. There's been uh, a few a few um, politicians that have joined me that previously served in the military, including my counselor and your colleague, David Hill, um, who also yeah. served in the military. And, and I've had some great discussions with him and other other uh, elected officials. And thank you so much for that and your dedication to our country. And and let's talk a bit about now this this transition you made from from military to working sort of like behind the scenes in politics to stepping up and actually running for council as the elected official. So what made you decide to run for council back in 2018? There was a there was a real opportunity there to build on the great work uh, that uh, that my predecessors, Bob Annette, uh, you know, Herb Krelling uh, had had done here in Orleans. I really felt that you know, we were we were ripe um, to, to really kind of come into our own, uh, not just as a bedroom community, but also uh, an economic driver as well. So I was really interested, you know, to see what Orleans looked like when it was um, firing on, on, on all cylinders. Um, so we were, you know, kind of a bedroom community. A lot of people were telling me, like, you know, they, they really wish that we had some of the amenities um, that uh, that the West and, and you know, Barhaven, uh, new communities like Barhaven, Canada have. And so um, I went about trying um, to really set the, the policy framework to ensure that we have that sort of equality uh, and just build on the work uh, of, of my predecessors. Um, so really proud of what we've been able to accomplish uh, so far. So let's talk about that now. Let's talk about sort of what you've been able to accomplish in this segment, which is called serving as an elected official. So first off, before we talk about about some of your achievements over the past four years, I want to talk a bit about your role as the as the local councillor for the people in your ward. So what has been your favorite part about serving the people of your ward as their councillor over the past four, four, four and a bit years? The best part um, of, of this job has been putting together uh, a team of hardworking and caring individuals to serve the community and to see the results of that. Um, I, you have to, you have to understand like, you know, uh, we're, we're pulled so many different ways as chairs of committees uh, and we try our best to spend as much, as much time as we can in the community, but oftentimes you're, you're stuck down at city hall. So that really like that bread and butter work that's done every single day uh, is done um, you know, by Scott Norris in my office, uh, by Jordan Ferris, by Mikael 
uh, and, um, and, and by Darcy. And it, it's so important that you put together a team that knows the area, uh, that cares deeply, that is, you know, respectful of the residents. So my, my favorite part about this is, you know, delivering results for people uh, every single day. And uh, that's something that I have a great group of people that, that helped me to do. Um, so getting out there in the community, hearing from people, um, you know, hearing their ideas, and then seeing those those ideas come to fruition. That's it's 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 an incredible thing. Well, and and you know what, right now, like shout out to all the great political staff out there, all the staff on Parliament Hill, all the staff at Queen's Park, all the staff at, at City Hall, all the staff out there that make what we are doing right now possible, setting up meetings and 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 all those different things. And it's it's a big part of, of politics that's very much unseen. And and you're a former staffer, so you know that and and those sorts of things. It's a very important role in our politics. It's the politics that's sort of the unseen part, and it's just super important. So thank you to to everybody out there that makes our because out of every like 25 council members there are a lot more hundreds of, of staffers sit, sitting behind there doing that work but let's talk a bit now about your achievements as uh, a council over the past four years so what has been your favorite achievement or some of your favorite achievements um, as the councillor over over the past little while for me, sort of the centerpiece of, of uh, last term um, was expanding what was supposed to be the, the secondary plan um, for, for Place d'Orléans uh, and expanding that, working with Steve Willis and the team um, to, to create the Orleans uh, Economic uh, Corridor Study, which became uh, the Orleans uh, Secondary Plan. So what this is going to, to realize is, you know, 850 meters around each of the brand new stations uh, that we're getting on the LRT line that's running down the middle of the 174. Um, we're going to turn that area into an economic driver. We're going to build more affordable housing. We're going to make it, uh, you know, uh, a neighborhood um, where you can live, work, and play. So, like, picture St. Joseph Boulevard as it is right now um, compared uh, to what it could be. We wanted to reimagine that space. We wanted to see, you know, buildings move closer to the streets, um, you know, uh, ensure that we've got great amenities along the strip really attract people into you know the core of uh of what used to be you know the village of saint joseph d'orléans rebuild our main street have people actually living on it um so you know different levels like maybe five six uh seven uh you know four two stories um of uh, of, of residential above uh these uh these podiums of business you know make it walkable so you know have a space for pedestrians you know uh, some trees a raised cycling track you know maybe some on-street parking and uh, really slow the traffic down on saint joseph so that it becomes you know a walkable and enjoyable uh, experience uh, in the east end so that we can pull some of those um some of those jobs out here and some of those great amenities that we've been uh that we've been you know really really working for for the you know since since amalgamation well, definitely an, an important thing is that I'm sure we're going to talk about in the next segment, but sort of we, we see the expansion of line one and sort of the building of all the different uh, transit as as we go into phase two and phase three and of the LRT in the next five, 10 years. And it's ongoing. It's it's important to continue building those walkable cities. But we're going to go on to the next segment because I'm sure that's going to come up again. So the last segment is called the world of politics around us, where we'll talk a bit about this world of politics that surrounds us. So first off, who is or who was another politician or politicians that inspire you? That's a really good question. Um, I think that some of the most um, some of the most inspirational leadership that I've that I've seen in you know in, in world politics uh, are, are leaders uh, that step up uh, in in a time of crisis uh, and do well. Um, I'm I'm particularly fascinated uh, by by Winston Churchill. I recently read an, an incredible uh, biography uh, written by uh, Lord Andrew Roberts um, uh, called uh, Churchill uh, Walking with Destiny. Um, this is somebody uh, who you know was uh, a man kind of after his time um, and and stuck around uh, through uh, quite a bit of, of strife and turmoil. Uh, a very unlikely. Uh, Prime Minister of uh, of um, of the UK, uh, somebody who um, almost died uh, three times before, um, you know, before becoming Prime Minister. Somebody who was in and out of government uh, over the years, who held really important um, you know positions and had some catastrophic failures uh, throughout his career, and always managed to kind of reinvent himself and be resilient. We oftentimes see politicians that, you know, either suffer a defeat or suffer a setback and, 
you know, they decide, okay, well, I guess, I guess that's it. Um, not Winston. Um, he stuck around, worked hard, uh, and, and realized, uh, his, his ultimate goal and, and, and really brought kind of the, uh, the free world, uh, through one of the most difficult periods, uh, in, in modern history. Definitely an important figure in, in world politics, like you mentioned, and sort of seeing that and learning from that and seeing who, what sort of lessons can be learned from that, even even though we may not be in, you know, the type of crisis he was of, you know, world war, it's just like sort of taking the lessons he learned and did and, and applying those to whatever situations we have. But finally, now I want to go on to the last question, which is called, uh, which is what do you think is an issue or some issues that need to be focused on more? Uh, in uh, in the city, like uh, yeah, yeah, that you want to focus on that should be focused on more in the city, that sort of thing. What do you want to look at and focus on? Yeah, for sure. I mean, we need to continue uh, ensuring that uh, that Ottawa and Orleans can can be a place where where everyone can live. So that means you know, working on setting the conditions uh, for for economic development, ensuring that uh, you know there are good uh, paying jobs out there for people of all different uh, education levels. We want to make sure that. You know, we're lifting everyone up uh, when we're starting to see that sort of economic prosperity. I think that we need to keep uh, keep Ottawa affordable. Um, so ensure that we're working with trusted partners uh, to build um, affordable housing. We need to improve uh, our park spaces, our green spaces, our uh, our common areas, um, so that this is a, a place that you know attracts uh, attracts continues to attract people and really celebrate. You know, Can- Canadians and, and Ottawans especially, I think. Sometimes we like to get down on ourselves and we like to be, you know, self-deprecating. But this is really an incredible city to live in. It's a bilingual city that celebrates, you know, it's rich uh, Franco-Ontarian and Anglo cultures. Uh, We're welcoming of uh, of cultures from across the world. This is an incredibly diverse city. And and I believe that that we are certainly stronger because of that, um, because of that diversity. So, you know, we should take a moment and take stock of that and and celebrate it. We've got world-class museums, great green spaces, incredible cultural festivals. Um, this is a city that should be celebrated uh, and, and perhaps we, we deride ourselves a little bit too much. Well, definitely. And it's important that you brought up the the, the strong Franco-Ontarian roots. And uh, a couple well, last in March, I had um, had a panel with uh, with the MP there, Marie-France Alonde and, uh, and another colleague, Stephanie Plant and uh, Lucille Collard coming on to talk about the the rich Franco-Ontarian history in in Orleans and in Vanier and across Ottawa. It's it's an important part that sort of um that is important to to your community and and an important part of our, our our city and our province. And it's it's important to sort of look at that and and figure out how we can support that and, and keep that alive. Like that was a big part of the conversation I had last week I had the Ontario Minister of Francophone Affairs on and we talked about that and it's it's so important to to keep that alive and what do you think that you can do as a counselor um to sort of make sure that that stays alive in sort of the expansion of of sort of building Orleans up and and continuing with development and all that what do you think you can do and work with to to help um to help sort of keep that culture of Franco-Ontarian alive in Orleans well, first of all, this is definitely not something that like one one individual can do, and so I'm very very lucky um, that not like not not just in Orleans, but across this, across the city, we've got some incredible uh, francophone uh, organizations uh, that are doing uh, just that. You know, from our school boards, um, uh, our two French school boards, uh, to the um, SPOFO, which is the uh, the Society for you know the the protection and the promotion. Of uh, Franco-Ontarian culture uh, in 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 Ottawa and Orleans, um, we've got uh, RAFO, uh, Le Rendez-vous des Aînés Franco-Ontariens. So the, this is, uh, uh, you know, our uh, our more experienced members of our community uh, getting together, uh, which is wonderful. MIFO, the Mouvement uh, d'Implication Franco-Ontarienne, ici à Orléans. Um, you know, MIFO is partnered with Schenkman to put on uh, incredible cultural displays and shows. Um, you know, and I've worked uh, with with Svofo to uh, to do pro- like commemorations of areas. You know, like we, we were built um, as uh, La Paroisse de Saint Joseph d'Orléans. There are some incredible families that you know uh, that that still live here. There are streets that bear their names. We've uh, dedicated um, you know forests and areas where you know these these used to be farms of some of these original families um, to continue to 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 promote uh, Franco and Ontarian culture uh, and. Um, 
d'utiliser la langue. C'est tellement important de continuer de, de, de s'exprimer en français. It's, it's so important um, that, uh, that we respect, protect and promote uh, this beautiful Franco-Ontarian heritage that we have across the city. Yesterday, uh, Catherine Kitts, Lane Johnson, um, you know, Theresa Cavanaugh, Steph Plant, the, the mayor, uh, and I were down at Maison de la Francophonie, which is in a Bay Ward near Bayshore. Not, not a, an area that you think that there would be, you know, a large concentration of, uh, of Franco-Ontarians, but there, there are, whether you're in the east of the city, uh, the west, uh, downtown, uh, or, or the south, there are Franco-Ontarians across this, uh, this in, incredible city. Uh, and it's important um, that, uh, that we continue to promote and protect that, uh, that, that beautiful and rich culture. Definitely. And, and something so important and a great way to, to sort of end off on today. So that is all for today. Thanks. Thanks, Matthew, so much for joining me. It was great to have you. Awesome to see you. Thanks so much. Well, it was great having you. And if you like this interview, make sure you go check out the other interview here on YouTube for Top 10 on Friday if you're watching this at the date of the premiere. So Let's Discuss Politics is a VCAL production. Until the next video, I'm Vincenzo Cala, signing out.